Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm beginning a brand new series where we are going to learn how to program using the Python programming language. Okay, so over the uh, next few weeks we'll be adding a lesson a week maybe uh, where we just go through the basics of learning programming concepts using uh, the Python programming language. So in this first installment what I'll do is I'll help you uh, download uh, Python, install it on your computer, and we'll walk through the uh, IDE, the Integrated Development Environment for Python, which is known as IDLE, uh, and then we'll write uh, a few basic scripts, right, and we'll get started talking about the basics. Okay, but before we, we get there, why don't we talk about the language a little bit itself? You know, why do we want to learn Python? What well, what is Python? Why why not use something like Java or C++? What's what's the difference? Well, uh, you know, instead of reinventing the wheel and coming up with my own language, I, I grabbed this blurb from uh, Wikipedia, which I think describes the language really well. Okay, so I'll just read it and we'll go through it and I'll, I'll kind of talk about it a little bit. So Python, it's a widely used general purpose high level programming language. Okay, its design philosophy emphasizes code readability and its syntax allows programmers to express concepts in fewer lines of code than would be possible in languages such as C or C++ or Java. Right. The language provides constructs in in intended to enable clear programs of both the small and large scale. Python supports multiple programming paradigms, including object-oriented, imperative and functional programming, or procedural styles. It features a dynamic type system, which is really nice, and automatic memory management, again, really nice. We don't have to worry about garbage collection. And it has a large and comprehensive standard library. People talk a lot about Python being a uh, language that has a lot of stuff already ready to go out of the box. Right? Then you, a lot of uh, the library is so extensive that a lot of times you don't have to write your own code. There's probably a tool in there to do it, to do a lot of stuff for you already. It makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so it's a high-level programming language, just like Java or C++. Okay, so uh, it makes it easy to use. Um, when they talk about the design philosophy emphasizing code uh, readability, uh, we're going to see that uh, the syntax uh, is, is different than other languages you may have seen before. Um, we're going to designate blocks of code, for example, instead of using something like a semicolon to end our statement or curly braces to, to, to designate blocks of code, we're going to use indentation. We're going to use tabs. And that spacing forces you really to uh, use a rudimentary coding style. Right? It forces you to write a neater code than you otherwise would have to. Okay, if, you, if your spacing's not good, if your block, if your indentation's not good, the program isn't going to work. Okay, and the way the syntax is written, you can many times uh, get the same functionality in a Python program that would take you many more lines in a C++ uh, program, for example. All right? Maybe a program might take you 20 lines in C. It could take you five in Python. That's what we're talking about when uh, we're talking about expressing concepts in fewer lines of code. Okay, And uh, the dynamic type system is really nice. Okay, We're going to see that, you know, again, if you're coming from a language that's uh, strongly typed, uh, or excuse me, that is uh, statically typed, that is to say that you have to define variables at compile time and what data type they are, uh, you're going to see that in Python. We don't have to worry about that. It's, you know, we just assign our values to our variables as we need to. We don't have to worry about the typing per se, okay? Um, there will be situations where we have to have to deal with it, uh, but, you know, a variable, it's just a name. It's pretty sweet. So Python, I, I wanted to do this series because Python to me seems a much more friendly uh, language for beginners to use or to learn than something much more complex like C, uh, C++, Java, etc. And the great thing about Python is is that it's easier to learn. Not only is it easier to learn, but, but it's a very robust language. 
it's it's you can anything you need to do in with a computer or with a computer program you can do uh, with Python. Uh, one of my favorite examples of this is the uh, MMO uh, Eve Online. Okay? Their server software is written with a version of Python called Stackless Python, and it is the largest gaming universe uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, you have a single shard server where you have tens of thousands of players all on the same server playing at once. And it's 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 a very sophisticated piece of software and it's written uh, a good portion of it in, in, in Python. And Python's also a great language too because uh, it, it's a language that can act as a glue. If you need a C++ program to work with a Java program to work with uh, an assembly program, you can hook all of those programs together using Python. Okay, So uh, it's a great language. I'm a big fan of it. Okay, so uh, another difference uh, with Python as opposed to other languages, um, compiled languages, for example, like uh, C++ or Java or assembly, well not Java, Java uses a virtual machine, like C or C++ or uh, assembly is the fact that it is an interpreted language. Okay, It's different than uh, compiled languages. So if you come from a C background then you're familiar with what a compiler is. You know what compilation is. right? The, the, the process of taking your source code and converting it into an executable a computer binary file. So a flowchart for that could look something like this. right? Traditionally or, or with non-interpreted languages like C, you have the computer program file, right, which you then put into the compiler. You have this compilation process that goes on. You know, the preprocessor runs, the linker runs, all that kind of stuff, and you end up with this uh, binary file, a .exe file, for example, if you're on a Windows machine, and then the program executes. Okay. Well, with interpreted languages, which Python is, you have a different scenario. Okay, and what you have is you have your computer program file, your source code, right? But that source code's fed into an interpreter, okay? And then that interpreter is uh, responsible for the program execution. So an interpreter is a program which basically runs on your computer, which reads your program file, and it is this interpreter that allows for the portability of Python code. Okay, you can take a Python source code file on a Windows machine and you can walk over, you know, you can email it or whatever, you can walk over to a Mac machine and take that same source code file and run it through the interpreter and it's going to work. You don't have to worry about uh, re-engineering the software based on the platform you're using. Okay, it's, Python is a language that is cross-platform compatible, just like Java is. Okay, so uh, that's the difference, right? If you're writing a C program, you're going to have to compile um, the code to create a binary file that runs on Windows. If you want to do it on, a, if you want to run that same program on a Linux machine, then you have to recompile it, re-engineer re it, refactor it so it works on a Linux box, right? Because you can't just take the executable from a Windows machine and go from it to a Linux computer. It doesn't work that way. But with an interpreted language like Python, you can take that computer program file, the source code, and just go to any machine you want, as long as it has an interpreter running on it, and you can execute your program. Okay, it's fantastic. It's easy to learn. It has all of the features of a modern programming language, and it's cross-platform compatible. Okay, so now that you know a little bit about Python and why I'm such a big fan of this language, and a little bit about how it works and how it varies from uh, compiled languages, um, why don't we go ahead and uh, get started and start digging into uh, the language? Okay, so uh, before we can do that, what we're going to need to do, if you don't have Python installed on your computer already is we're going to have to go download it and we're going to have to get a copy of the IDE. Okay, so if we're going to do that, what we need to do is we need to go to python.org. Okay, just punch that up in your browser and we can click on this downloads or we can mouse over this downloads uh, option here. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to select the platform that you're on, right? If it's Windows or if it's uh, Mac OS or other platforms like Linux, right? Choose your, pick your poison. It just so happens to be that I'm on a Windows computer for this demonstration, so I'm gonna pick Windows. Okay. So I click on that and I can see the Python releases for Windows. So my 
demonstration, my my uh, my series of videos, we're going to be working with Python 3.4. Okay, so that's the one that I downloaded and installed on my computer. Okay, so you can click on that, and it'll take you to the Python 3.40 uh, page. Okay, then we can go down here, and we can proceed to the download page for the download. Okay, and then that brings up a list of files. Okay, so what we want is we want the very last option if we're using Windows machine okay and I want the uh, x86 MSI installer okay click on that you download it you save it to your desktop or somewhere convenient and you run it okay Oops. Oopsie. okay and then you can run it okay so I'll just uh, go through and save it and just so you can see what it looks like Okay, so once I've downloaded downloaded it, okay, we can click on it to run it. You know, if you're using Chrome, you can just go straight there or go to wherever you saved it and double click on it. Okay, I already installed it, but um, once you run this, you'll just just choose the default for everything. Okay, and once you're done with that, you'll be finished with the install, and you can go to your start menu, and you can go under all programs. Okay, Python 3.4 is what we want, and then we want to choose Idle, the Python GUI. Okay, Idle is uh, the integrated development environment that comes with uh, Python, the Python programming language. Okay, so when you run that thing, you're going to see that uh, what opens up is the Python shell. Okay, and we'll talk about that uh, in a bit. But basically, with the Python shell, uh, you can type statements. Right here at the uh, this prompt here, and you can get immediate feedback. So if you want to see if a particular statement will work, right? Like if you wanted to say "Hello World" or something like that, you can type a statement right in to the interpreter, okay? And you'll get some results, or you'll get an error message if it doesn't work, okay? But but um, we're not going to talk about the shell directly like that. That's not how we're going to use it. Okay, if you want to uh, write a program, we're going to need to create a text file to store our source code in. Okay, and so in order to do that, what, what we want to do is we want to go to File here, and we want to select New File. Okay, so now we have a window here, a text window, where we can start typing in some uh, our source code. All right, so let's say I wanted to just write to the screen. Uh, uh, hello world or something All right, the traditional hello world program I'd write my statement in there save it I'll save it to my desktop I'll just call it python.py okay. and now I can go run and run module okay and so there's my output right there hello world okay all right, so now that we know how to create a brand new source code file, let's start typing some things in and running it. Uh, let's let's dig into uh, the meat of this thing. Okay. Okay, so uh, when we're dealing with Python, you know, most most of the time, you know, if you're if you're coming from a C background or any other compiled language, you're talking about source code, right? Well, in Python, we talk about writing scripts, okay? And so, source code scripts, you know, uh, the interpreter uh, for Python reads your scripts and then processes the command in those scripts. Okay. So we don't end up with, well, why, why, why do we use this terminology? Well, we don't end up with an executable file. So our source code doesn't get compiled into a binary file that runs on the computer. Um, what we have is we have a script file that the interpreter reads from line by line, executing the commands or the statements inside our script. Okay. So my script right here, my python.py script, all it does it just has one statement in it, and all that statement does is uh, print hello world, okay, display hello world, all right? Um, but uh, if we want to do that, that's fine, right? We just use this print statement here, and uh, inside the 
Inside the parentheses, we put the string literal that we want to display. Okay. Um, so print hello world. We saw that. Okay. But what if we want to comment our code, right? In in C, uh, two forward slashes does a line. Well, in Python, um, it's the pound sign. Okay. So that creates a comment a program. Okay. And so comments, they're just all comments are uh, again if you're if you're brand new you, you don't know comments are statements that are uh, ignored by the interpreter in this case or compiler if you're coming from a different language and they're just for the human for reference right they're just notes you can make to yourself or other programs okay so uh, the pound symbol will make a comment on a single line okay. Uh, but we can also use uh, we can also use um, triple apostrophes or triple quotes to do multi-line comments. Okay, so you'll see that if I run this, run the module, right? Hello world is still displayed. That's the first statement here. That's the first print function. Um, but the comments are ignored. Nothing, nothing happens with these. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about the print function. Now, in Python, uh, pretty much everything. We're going to see that a lot. We have a lot of interaction with functions. Okay. There's a ton of functions that come prepackaged with the language that we don't have to write. Okay. You're going to see that a lot of the data that you work with gets funneled through functions. Okay. Functions are are a big deal. And we'll take a look at writing our own functions. Okay. Uh, if you don't know what a function is, if you're brand new to programming, uh, don't worry about it for right now. Basically, um, we're going to have these words that we're going to use. We're going to have these things called functions that are going to help us do things. Okay. So the first one that we're going to look at is we're going to look at the print function. Okay. And we already saw me use it earlier right when I did my very very simple first demo right and the print function is just uh, responsible for displaying output to the screen okay so the print function uh, anything after print right inside the quotes is displayed to the screen it's displayed as it's displayed as output okay so I can do something like this print programming is fun right and run it okay so there's the first print statement hello world the second one programming is fun okay now uh, in other languages you whenever you have a string literal it's inside double quotes right uh, in other languages you might have the character data type which is in single quotes well, in Python, they're the same thing. Okay, uh, so print programming is fun. Uh, can be written that way. We can also use single quotes to do the exact same thing. Okay, so if I run this, okay, exact same thing. All right, I can mix them and match them. All right, so I can do, I can write another print statement. I can do something like this. I can put separate strings. These are two separate strings, both pass to the print function, right? Single quotes and double quotes, exact same thing. Okay, there we go. We don't have to worry about that in our syntax. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> you'll see that uh, a single line, right? This this print function here, printed programming is fun on a single line. This one. Printed programming is fun on the next line, below there on the next line, right? Um, the language will ignore blank lines, okay? So that's why you don't see a different line in between here. You might have thought, well, maybe since there's a since there's an empty line between these print statements, I'd have an empty line here. No. Uh, white space like this is ignored. Okay, so this is the same as this. Okay. It's uh, the fact that this print statement executes that causes this programming is fun and print automatically moves the cursor to the next line. Okay, so uh, 
if we do print hello there, right? Uh, this produces one line of output. Okay, so let's do it again. Let's run it. Okay, so there's a single line there. All right, so we can use well. What if we want to? print this out on multiple lines. What if we want to have a single print statement that uh, prints strings on different lines? Well, we can use an escape sequence to do that. Okay, And this is the backslash n escape sequence. This will produce two lines of output. Okay, So what do I mean by escape sequence? Well, an escape sequence uh, is a character inside a string between the double or single quotes uh, with a backslash preceding it. Okay, and these escape sequences allow us to do different things with our strings. Okay, so in this case, the uh, backslash and escape sequence is going to insert a new line character inside the string. So what's going to happen is that print is going to get past this literal that contains an escape sequence inside it. And it's going to print hello on the first line, then a new line character, and then there on the next line. Okay, so let's run that and see what that looks like. Okay, see that escape sequence, this backslash n, is what was responsible for splitting these up onto two different lines. Okay, and there are other escape sequences, and as we move forward through the series, we'll take a look at those. We'll learn more escape sequences other than just uh, backslash n. Okay, so um, if you want to break up output onto multiple lines, you can either have multiple print statements or you can use an escape sequence with a single print statement. Okay, all right, so let's move on. All right, so the next thing we can talk about, and I'll clean all this stuff up here. Let me comment this out so it's out of our way. Okay, I'll use multi-line comments. So now you're going to see that. Uh, oops, I'm going to get rid of this here. Okay, now we're going to see when we run this module, nothing happens. I commented out everything. It's an empty script. Okay. All right. So let's talk about variables and literals. Right. Um, so what is a what is a variable? Let's 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 get really basic. Okay. A variable is just a storage location in memory. Okay. It is a location where we can stick a value that we want to use at some point later that uh, we can change whenever we need to. Okay. It's a storage location in memory. Okay. It has a name and a value assigned to it. Okay. So instead of referring to a hexadecimal number memory address, we can give this memory location a name, okay? Something humans can understand, okay? Uh, but unlike other languages, okay, uh, variables in Python, they do not have types, okay? There is no such thing as int x in, uh, or care c or double d in Python. Okay, we don't have types. Okay, we'll see an example in a second. Okay, and just like any other programming language, a variable has to be defined uh, before it's used. Okay, so you can't start using a variable until you've defined it. Okay, well, let's define a variable so we can use it. Okay, so let's say that uh, I want a variable, and I'm just going to name it item and I'm going to assign it to value 5. There, I've just defined a variable named item. Okay, so now there's a memory location that will hold this value 5 uh, that I can refer to using the name item. Okay, so let's run this. I'm not going to see anything too exciting, right? Because all I've done is stored 5 in this memory location that I've named item. Okay, notice there's no semicolon. Uh, there's no data type at the beginning for those of you who have come from other languages, right? This is this is kind of different. Okay. All right. 
So now let's talk about what a literal is. Okay. Uh, a literal is, is just a value like 9 or 10 or hello there uh, written into a program's code. Okay. So examples, hello there, this is a string literal. Okay. What is a string? A string is uh, a group of characters, a string of characters grouped together in some logic way. Right? Uh, hello there is a string that says hello there. It's a string of characters that says hello there. Okay. Uh, and five, just just the integer five, is um, an integer literal. Okay. Right. So those are two examples of literals. Okay. Item is a variable. Five is the integer literal that's being uh, stored in item. Okay. Inside the variable. All right. All right, so the next thing we have to talk about is, let's talk about what an identifier is. Okay, identifiers are programmer-defined names for parts of a program, okay? Or in this case, with Python, a script, okay? So these can be variables, they can be functions, uh, there'll be classes later when we talk about that. Okay, anything in the uh, program that we give a name to is an identifier. So item is the identifier for the variable location that right now has five assigned to it. Okay. All right. So the next thing I want to tell you about are Python keywords. Okay. Keywords in a language are words that are reserved for use in the language. Okay, they can't be identifiers, so you can't have variable names that are keywords. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, an example of some keywords. I won't go through every single one of them. Uh, we'll 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 see all of them as we move forward, as we have to use each one of them. But an example keyword is and, right? Um, Another example keyword is uh, while, right? Another one is uh, or, else, if. These are all keywords that are reserved for the use of the language itself. Okay, and we'll we'll use them as we move forward. Okay, uh, for those of you coming from C or Java, right? This is another cool thing about Python, um, and is basically this language's implementation the logical and that you see in other languages, right? We actually write the word and, okay? Um, or is or, right? It's uh, it's the logical or. We don't have this weird symbol, right? So this makes it, you know, you can see, uh, maybe if you're coming from a different language, you can see how, uh, what I mean when I say that, you know, Python is newbie friendly, right? Instead of having to memorize these cryptic symbols, you know, we can just write and, <laughs> okay, so with keywords in a language for newbies, right? These again, these are these are words that you cannot use as identifiers. So I couldn't do something like this, and equals five, because and is a reserved or a key word. Right? If I tried to run this module, I'll get a syntax error. Right? Why? Because and is a keyword, and I can't use it as a verb name. Okay. All right. So again, remember identifiers are just programmer defined names for something in our program variable uh, function etc okay uh, but there are rules for uh, what your identifiers can be right what you can name variables or functions there are rules okay so what what are these rules well uh, all identifiers, they have to begin with an alphabetic character. Okay, what's an alphabetic character? Well, an alphabetic character, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, you know, lower or upper case. So this is a valid identifier, A95, right, has a variable name, and we'll assign it the literal two. Okay, that's valid. Uh, or they have to begin 
with an upper score, or under, excuse me, underscore. So we could do five equals two, that's valid too. This is similar to you know Java C, right? Or C. Okay, same kind of thing. Okay, uh, and in Python, like other languages, upper and lowercase characters are distinct. Distinct. Okay. So what does this mean? Well, that means that this A95 that I just this variable, this identifier here, uh, for the variable where I'm storing two in, this upper score A95 is a different variable than this lower score A95. Okay, case matters. All right. Okay, so let's talk about uh, data types in Python. Okay, uh, data types are, I guess, less strictly enforced for our variables. Okay, uh, data types are determined dynamically in Python. That is to say. The data type that's inside a variable isn't determined until runtime. Okay. In other languages, the data types are statically determined. Like for example, in C, um, you might have something like this: in x equals five, right? At compile time, uh, the data type of the variable x is determined using that keyword int. Okay. So we have to specify that. Um, but in Python, okay. The data types are dynamically determined. That is to say that at runtime, the uh, data type stored inside a variable is determined. Okay, so that means that foo equals five. Okay, when this script is actually running, the interpreter looks at the statement foo set to five. Uh, at that point, the interpreter determines, okay the uh, data type inside of foo uh, is an integer okay, or is a string or whatever. Okay, so we don't have to worry about specifying that before we run the program. Okay. All right. So the type of data in a variable is determined when the value is assigned. Okay. At runtime, okay. In Python, oops, Python is a weakly typed language. Okay, so we can do this. This is going to, for those of you who come from you know, other programming languages, this is, and you haven't seen this before, you're going to go, whoa. Okay, this is cool. Right, so I can do something like this: foo equals five. Right, I can now do foo equals five point five. Okay, without any loss of precision. Right, um, in other languages, if foo was an integer, for example, and I tried to assign five point five to it, well, I wouldn't be able to store the floating point part at right, decimal places. In Python, we don't care. Okay, there's no loss of precision when we do this. Okay, I can assign it the string a. Now remember. Single quotes, double quotes, exact same thing. This is the string literal A being assigned to foo, not the character foo. Okay, there is no character data type per se. Okay. And then I could also do this. This is going to compile. Okay, and it's going to work just fine. Okay. So not compile, it's going to run. Okay, we don't have there's no compiling in Python, excuse me. Um, the interpreter is going to read all of this stuff, right? In the first instance, 5 is assigned to foo, that's fine. The next statement, uh, 5 is overwritten with 5.5. The next statement, uh, the string A overwrites that. So we don't have to worry about type matching. Okay? Really cool stuff, right? We can have a variable, we can define a variable, we can give it an identifier, name it whatever we want, and then we can assign whatever type of data that we want to it at any time. Okay, it's fantastic. Okay. All right. So, what about defining variables, right? I've shown you so far just one example 
of how we define variables, right? We can uh, give it an identifier following the rules, right? Foo in this case. Um, and then we can assign it some value to be stored there. Okay, well, there's different ways we can do this, okay? Um, so let's talk about uh, defining variables. Okay, let's get this out of the way, this background step out of the way. Okay, so let's talk about defining our variables. Okay, all right. Oops. Okay, so we can we can assign or define on separate lines something like this A equals one, B equals two, C set three, okay? But we can also do it on the same line, okay? Okay. Uh, A as long as we use uh, commas. Okay. This is perfectly fine. So order matters here, just keep that in mind. So what's going to happen is this 1 is going to be assigned to A, 2 is going to be assigned to B, and 3 is going to be assigned to C. Okay. So notice here that when we wrote this, for some of you that are coming from you know strongly typed languages like C, Java, whatever, you're thinking, oh, this is going to be an error, right? I've redefined my variables right, twice. No, that's not what's going to happen. This is going to run just fine. Okay, the first time you define a variable, okay, uh, that's when the definition happens, right? This line right here uh, is basically just assigning now one, two, and three. This is more of an assignment statement. This is this is the first time A, B, and C, we've seen A, B, and C. So this is the definition. Okay, but I can take this out. If I was to take this out, now this would be the definition. This is the first time that A, B, and C have been assigned something. Okay, so if I run the module, it's going to work just fine. Okay, so it just depends on, uh, you know, when you define or when you, the the uh, interpreter first sees the variable, whether or not it's a definition or an assignment. Well, this is the first time that it saw A, so this is the definition. Okay. This is the second time it saw A, so this is an assignment statement. Okay. And if I got rid of that, then this would be the first time A, B, and C are seen by the interpreter, so then it's the uh, definition. Okay, so we're an assignment statement. Okay. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing for you. Okay. So in addition, variables that store different data types can be defined on the same line. Okay. Let me see there. okay, again, this is something that's completely different from other languages you may have seen before. Okay, so I can go A, B, C, just like, or similar to the syntax on the previous line, and I can do something like this. Here's a string literal, here's an integer literal, and here is a floating point literal. Okay. That is going to execute just fine. Okay, we can't do that in C, for example, but we can do that in Python. They're getting a lot of these syntax rules that are kind of annoying. They're getting them out of our way. Okay, trying to make things a little easier. And that 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 uh, fits into the overall theme of the language of trying to make things you know simpler and easier to understand and, and neat and clean. Okay. All right. So, uh, in addition to storing, you know, these types of literals into variables, we can also store our floating point numbers using e notation, you know, which you've seen from C, for example. Okay. So a equals three point one five twenty. So that's that's shorthand for uh, scientific notation, right? Scientific notation it would it would look something like 3.15 times 10 to the 20th power. Right? That's what this is. Okay. 
Alright. So let's print out A now. Okay. And we'll talk more about print function, but here what we can do is we can pass variables in addition to literals like we saw earlier with the print function where we did a hello world or whatever, we can pass variables to print as well. Okay, so when we run this now, we're going to see the e notation stored in there. Okay. Uh, all right. okay. So, let's continue moving on. Something to keep a note of, since there are no data types per se, I mean, there's, we're a weakly typed language, um, there's no Boolean data types. Okay. Anything that is non-zero is true, and anything that is zero is false. Okay, so that's just like other languages, right? Any non-zero is true, zero is false. And so I, I think I should probably speak a minute on this data types thing. You might be a little bit confused. Uh, you know, when I say there's no typing in, 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 in Python, and then I turn around and I talk about a data type, right? Well, there are, there, there are different types of data, right? You can have just five here, for example, is an integer, okay? That's an integer. 2.89 is a floating point number, okay? High is a string, right? So those are types of data, right? But we're not specifying A has to be a string, or B has to be an int, or C has to be a float or a double, as you might see in other languages, right? Um, this type of data is being assigned to this memory location, but that's as far as we really have to have to care about it. Okay. So we're not talking about variables that have to have data types, but there are types of data that are being stored in our variables. Hopefully that, that makes sense. All right. Okay, so you can, as we've seen here, we can mix and match you know, what data types or what types of data we put into our memory locations. Python doesn't care. Okay. All right. All right, so we can we have a size of function, just like uh, there's a size of operator in C, right? and this is how we can access it. Okay. Right. Oops, I have to do an import. Sorry. Uh, and import is what gives us access to some functions that aren't built in uh, straight away. Uh, import gives us access to functions that are defined in the library that comes with Python. Okay, this is similar to the uh, pound include preprocessor directive from C or C++. Okay, so now if I run this, you know, bam, no problem, it's going to compile. Well, why didn't I see anything for sysc at size of A? Well, it's a function, right? And it returned the value, but I didn't do anything with it. So why don't we print it now? Why don't we pass that to the print function uh, to display it for us? Okay, so there we go. Okay, so A uh, stored 3.15 E20 in E notation, and that value, uh, this variable that's, that's storing it, uh, is occupying 16 bytes. Okay, memory. All right. Okay, so the next thing we can talk about is uh, variable assignment and initialization. Okay, so we've already seen examples of both of those things. Okay, when we're defining these variables here in, earlier, when we were defining these, uh, we're initializing them when we define them. What does initialization mean? Well, initialization means just, uh, it just means that when you define, you assign a value to a variable at definition time. Okay? Uh, in other languages, you could do something like this, right? Where all you do is define the variable, but you're not assigning anything to it. This is, this is the variable definition. Well, in Python, this isn't allowed. 
Okay, you can't just have a variable definition. You'll get an error, right? You have to initialize it with some value. Okay, so now when I do that, I'm good to go, right? So, uh, variables must be initialized when they are defined. Okay? That is to say that as soon as you make a name for a variable the first time, you have to give it a value. You have to assign a value to it. Variables must be initialized when they are defined. Okay? So, uh, something like this. Right? That's all that means. Okay? When I create a variable, you know, when I have an identifier, uh, for it, I have to uh, assign a value to it. Okay. okay, so the variable in this language, just like most other languages, right, it's on the left, okay, uh, and the value to be assigned to it is on the right of the equal sign. Okay, so this is invalid. Here's an invalid example. You can't do that backwards. 210 equal span. Okay, that's invalid syntax. Okay, but valid is uh, is this right. variable on the left value to be assigned to the variable on the right of the equal sign. Okay. All right. So we've just got a few more things to go through for this first. Uh, installment of this series I wanted to cover with you. All right, uh, let's talk. Let's let's talk just a little bit. Just touch a little bit on scope. Okay, scope is something that is going to come up quite a bit in programming, uh, and there's more to it than what I'm about to tell you. But let's let's get let's just get started with this piece of information. Okay. So what is scope? Well, the scope of a variable is the part of a program a variable can be used. Okay. Uh, as it turns out, um, a variable isn't always accessible inside your program. Okay. Depending on how you write your program, uh, you may have access to that variable or not. Okay. And scope refers to the part of the program where you can use that variable. Okay. And so what I want to talk about for right now is just to remind you that uh, you can't use a variable before it's defined. Okay. So here's an example. Right? Um, variable. This variable is out of scope. Okay. So if I did this, print z. Right? If I tried to pass the variable z to my print function without having to find it, it's not going to work and we get a syntax error. Right? This is backwards. I can't do it this way. Right? I have to define z before I can pass it to the print function. So this is invalid. Okay? Um, however, if I did something like this, y equals 99, and then print y. This is valid. Okay, so uh, this is valid. So, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So the last thing that we're going to talk about in this uh, in this in this video uh, in part one uh, is going to be arithmetic operators in Python. Okay. Uh, what are arithmetic operators? Addition, subtraction, modulus, division, floor division, uh, multiplication, that sort of thing. Okay. So let's take a look at that. Okay. Arithmetic operators. Okay. So Python has unary and binary operators. Okay. Well, what are those? What are unary and uh, binary operators? Okay. Well, here's an example of a unary operator: negative ten. Okay. Unary means that there's one operand 
that you're working with, right? So negative is the unary operator, uh, 10 is the operand. This operator is performing some function on the operand, right? It's changing 10 to negative 10, right? So that's an example of that, okay? But it also has binary operators, right? Binary operators are operators that have two operands, okay? So this is a binary operator, okay? Plus, right? Here's your first operand, here's your second operand, okay? All right, so what are the binary operators in Python? The binary arithmetic operators. Okay, here we go. Okay, we have addition. Okay. Okay, and then the cool thing about print two is that you can pass it expressions. An expression is uh, a sub-portion okay, of, of a statement. This whole thing is a statement. Okay, the print, the call to the print function is a statement. Okay, this part inside here, inside the parentheses, is an expression. It's part of the statement, uh, and this expression is being passed to the print function. Okay, so here is the addition operator. We'll go through all of them. Okay, this is subtraction. Oops. This is uh, division or multiplication. Right. Uh, for those of you who are brand new to programming, um, x is x, it's not times. Right? In, in many programming languages, the multiplication operator is represented with an asterisk. Okay. Okay, so of course then we have division. We actually have two types of division in Python, right? This is the normal division that you are used to, okay? Uh, and again, there's no division symbol like you're used to seeing in, you know, basic uh, arithmetic, right? Um, so we have to use something else. So it just happens to be in this language and in most other languages, it's a forward slash, okay? So this is saying, uh, divide two by two, okay? Numerator, denominator, okay? Divisor and divid dividend. All right, but we also have this thing called floor division, okay? And floor division, uh, basically it rounds down, okay? If you had divided like three by two, right? Three divided by two, normally you'd have 1.5. Well, uh, in that case, 3 divided by 2 with floor division will give you 1. Okay, this is similar to integer division in other languages. Okay. All right. And then lastly, we have modulus. Okay. Modulus operator is just a parentheses. And what this is saying is find the remainder of 2 divided by 2. Okay. And it's for use with integers, okay? So in this case, two divided by two, there is no uh, remainder, so this is gonna return zero, okay? But uh, three modulus two would return one. Why? Because three divided by two has a remainder of one, okay? All right. All right, so we do have, let's take a look at, let's take a closer look at, uh, at the division operator, okay? And this will be familiar to you, to those of you who come from another language, okay? We do have integer division, okay? So print 13 divided by five, what's that gonna display? Well, this is gonna display two, okay? Because when you're dividing an integer by an integer, you're gonna get an integer, okay? You're not gonna get a fractional part, okay? So this is the data types, the type of data that's being worked with here. This is, this is going back to what I was saying before about um, how there are types of data, but you don't particularly have data types, okay? Well, when you divide an integer by an integer, two types of data that are the same, right? What you're gonna get back, what this is gonna return 
is itself going to be an integer. Okay, so we'll lose any fractional component, right? This should be two point something, 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 right? But because we're doing an integer by an integer, uh, we're going to return an integer so that those decimal places, that fractional part, is dropped. Just like in C++, if you divide 13 by 5, you, know, you lose the fractional component. Okay. Uh, 1 divided by 7, same kind of thing. This is going to display... This is going to display 13. Okay. All right. But uh, just like there's promotion and demotion in other languages, okay, um, if either operand is floating point, the result is floating point. Okay. So now if I just do this, 13 divided by 5.0, Okay. This is going to give us the correct 2.6. Right? It's going to preserve the fractional component because now what's happening is, is that uh, this this uh, floating point number, right? When Python looks at this, it says, okay, this is floating point, so I I always want to divide uh, values that are the same. So it basically ends up promoting 13 to a floating point number also. So it considers 13 floating point also. So now what's happening is, is that you're actually dividing 13.0 by 5.0. And so now a floating point number divided by a floating point number returns a floating point number. No truncation happens. Okay. All right. And then similarly, if I do this, same kind of thing. Okay. This is going to display 13.0. Why 13.0? Well, 7 times 13 is 91. Okay. But you're still going to be displaying 13.0, right? Because it's going to return a floating point number. Okay, so I think that about covers everything that I wanted to talk about in this first installment, right? So there's the output that we talked about. So um, let me just do an example. Um, just write a, a sample script from scratch, and then we'll call it a night. Okay, so I'll delete all of this stuff out here, and I'll just write a script um, that just adds two numbers. Hello to my simple uh, script to, I'll put in a escape sequence in there, just to illustrate everything we talked about. Uh, my simple script to um, add, oops, to add two numbers. And then what I will do is I will define two variables, num1, I'll assign it uh, 5.2, right? and then I will uh, do num2 equals 8.7, okay? And now I'm going to sum those numbers together. Okay, so what's the sum? The sum is equal to num1 plus num2. Okay. So now what this statement here is saying is it's saying take the value that's stored in the memory location that I've named num1 and add it to the value that's stored in the memory location that I've named num2. So basically 5.2 plus 8.7 and then store that result in this final variable um, sum. And now I'll use my print statement to display the uh, the sum. Okay. Sum of num one and num two is okay. print sum. Okay, and then we'll be done. So um, module. Okay, hello to my simple script to add two numbers. Okay, a little more simple script, two, and then here's the new line character, add two numbers, right? So I assigned 5.2 to num1, 8.7 to num2, um, added them together, assigned that to sum, and then I printed the sum of num1 and num2 is, right? And then I printed the value stored inside of sum, okay? So that was a simple example, but it incorporates pretty much everything that we talked about, okay? And uh, simple program. It's basically a hello world program, right? It's just it's just something to show you 
uh, to tie everything together. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Okay, this is part one of what I'm hoping will be a very long, long series. I have content uh, ready to go uh, to move forward for quite a bit. Okay, so this is just to get your feet wet. Um, in this video, I showed you. I talked. Well, first of all, I talked about Python. And I gave you a quick overview of it. I, I told you why I thought it's a great language, um, why I think it's newbie friendly. I've uh, showed you where to go to get the language to download an IDE uh, and to install it. Uh, I've showed you some basics of the language, defining variables, right? Printing out simple strings, right? The escape sequence. We looked, talked about. Uh, the arithmetic operators in the language, um, uh, assignment of different values to the variables. We talked about how it's a uh, interpreted language as opposed to a compiled language, which you may have used before. Um, so uh, we've we've done enough to, to, to get our feet wet, to, to get our toe in, in the water, so to speak. Okay, there's tons more to come, um, but now uh, you should be set up and ready to go as we move forward okay so thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it if you liked it please give me a thumbs up leave any comments if I made any mistakes anywhere you know there's people out there who know Python a hell of a lot better than I do if you see this video and you see that I made a mistake somewhere please 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 uh, uh, shoot me a comment and let me know and I'll, and I'll be sure to address it okay all right great well thanks for uh, tuning in and we'll catch you next time